um, etched itself within YouTube and Google itself and the, um, the enforcement rankings of the moderation and rule setting. Sure. And I just want to, you know, jump back in, Bunny, for a second. Um, here's another thing. People on the extreme left and a lot of these, you know, SJW cultural types, what they don't understand, they're, they're always screaming about hate speech. If you Google hate speech and Supreme Court decisions, th they think that hate speech is the worst thing in the whole world. Well, guess what? The Supreme Court has upheld that hate speech is supreme is constitutionally protected. People have a right to do that in our society. And the reason why is because if 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 we don't allow neo-Nazis to say their stupid racist garbage, which it is, it, it's morally repugnant and it's laughable. I think the best way to crush racism is to point and laugh. <laughs> what do you mean? Black people are inferior to you? Really? Then you must not pay attention to sports statistics. What do you mean? you know, white people are the most intelligent. Y you might want to look at IQ in, in, in relation to, uh, you know, what races stack up because Asian people, you know, score a few higher standard de definition or variations than everybody else on average and just point and laugh at the stupid crap that comes out of their mouth. All you do by shutting down speech is you shut down speech, you know? So hate speech is something that should be protected and i'll just go ahead and say it out loud you guys can put a target on my back if you want but the reason why hate speech should be protected is for the simple fact that what these people are saying today is out of fashion what you're saying tomorrow might be out of fashion and then what you're saying might be considered hate speech where does that where do these people's uh line in the sand change it always always changes to another form of speech if you give these people a, a inch they're going to take in an, an infinity amount of space and it, it's time that people stand up and say enough you know do i hate racism sure do i consider myself someone who is anti-fascist yes my grandfather dudley was a turret gunner in world war ii he, he fought in the Pacific Island campaigns. He was held as a hostage by the, the, imper the, the imperial government of Japan and, and tortured by Japanese, you know? He actually got to shoot real fascist, you know? I'm jealous of my, my grandpa Dudley, but am I willing to shut down people's free speech? Oh, hell no, because I understand culturally what that means. That means that we don't value free speech. In the moment that people aren't allowed to express themselves, you're living in a dystopian hell. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, there's a reason why my channel mainly, uh, uh, well, when you look at my YouTube channel or any other kind of thing where I have com public commenting going on, it's generally go ahead and post with, as long as it's legal and stays within the terms of service of that specific platform. And, I mean, as is, I have people that come on and diss me all the time. And I'll go back and banter with them or ignore them. One of those two things. But, uh, nonetheless, I generally allow that stuff to stay up unless they're pulling some sort of underhanded shenanigans. In which case, then they end up receiving a, getting a nice little ban hammer. But, as is, I allow for open dis uh, discourse within my thing. I allow for the criticism. Because I need that count. Well, I need that negative criticism in order to be an effective judge of how well I'm doing my content and all that stuff. I and I will defend it, or of course uh, enact, or maybe take it uh, take it into consideration. There's many reasons why I allow that. And while others have their ways of managing their channels and stuff like that, that is just the way how I do things. And in a way, it has worked very well over the years. Especially it's showing itself on my Saturday night, uh, well, my weekend uh, bar hopping stuff. Streams are fairly chill. I have very little issues with people hopping in. Yeah, I get the occasional troll here and there, but who doesn't? That's just the fact of life. And when it comes to trolls, some of the best effective ways to deal with them is to straight up ignore them. And they'll eventually go away. You just got to maybe deal with their little antics here and there or whatever. Or you might have to give them a quick timeout or whatever. But guess what? If you can't troll, why the hell be there? If it, you're not getting a reaction kind of thing. And that's one of the big problems that these um, people within the corporations and stuff like that. 
allow these people to, to talk about these things at least. You don't need to sit there and completely ban them off your platform. And while, uh, let's say, they might not be monetizable, at least allow them. But as is with YouTube, they're outright banning like the talks about the gun issues and stuff like uh, certain issues on that spot or certain issues about hate speech. And then they go and uh, which is a big, huge hindrance. Some of the best live stream conversations I have listened to involve people arguing about some of the edgiest stuff like um, uh, what was it? Um, I, I'm trying to remember the it was like uh, racial equality not equality um dang it uh mike you're you're more uh you remember more about the whole like uh fighting uh some of the white supremacists and all that stuff back in the heyday what was some of the craps they uh spout out about uh racial purity or something like that no it wasn't purity or well, superior genetic superiority sure, shit sure i mean if you're actually interested uh in the rhetoric of these sub morons you can you can check out uh, the Daily Stormer, or you can check out the homepage of the National Socialist Movement. These are, you know, there was a guy years ago who started something called War White Aryan Resistance. His name was Tom Metzger, and basically it was a bunch of uh, bunch of garbage about racial purity and how, uh, you know, white people would become a minority in America. And basically, they wanted to take over the Midwest. That you know. Uh, Missouri and Idaho and a lot of these racist scumbags actually did move out the, to Idaho like a town called Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and they started a bunch of crap but right now the 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 real like the, the only real racist groups in America that are actually dangerous are people like the Aryan Brotherhood you know they're mostly a prison gang there are a bunch of people that go through prison a, as a rite of pa passage. And these scumbags, they call themselves Peckerwoods or whatever. But um, the best, you know, th their rhetoric is basically, you know, white people are becoming an endangered species and that they need to breed only uh, with themselves and that they need to protect themselves because their race is becoming a minority and they'll be bred out of existence. And, you know, that's the nature of humanity. You know, like we're all going to interbreed. You know, and from what I understand about genetics, when you have mixed race, mixed race, uh, racial uh, babies, they tend to have more dominant uh, phenotypes express themselves. Basically, you get stronger children, not weaker children, immune system wise, you know, uh, uh, you know, IQ and all, all these other factors. There, there's dozens of factors that, that has been proven that if you have multi race babies, that you produce stronger children as opposed to weaker children. Um, it has aspects of eugenics within it, you know, wh where they want to control who mates with who. But it, it, it's, it, here's one for you, too. There's actually been uh, studies to suggest that racism uh, to, to people that express racist ideologies actually have lower IQs. There's actual studies that actually show this. And I find that interesting, you know. Uh, but, yeah, it. Well, and the thing is, is the, the point I want to get across is, is those debates have been either some of the most entertaining, cringiest shit shows I've ever witnessed, listened to, or have been very insightful because of the people that are involved in those debates and the back and forth. Um, and what was it? Uh, Sargon Akkad, V, and um, I'm trying to remember the other person that was involved in that stuff have been doing really, I mean... Well, not winning everything outright on the debates and arguments and stuff like that, have been standing up there and getting involved in these things. They've been throwing themselves into that discussion debate. 